Uh, lining up, uh, it's a battle of cities once again. But uh, just re let me remind, uh, as usual, uh, that the uh, competition is, or rather, the presentation should be in debate form, not in uh, speech form. And I'm sure the two schools understand when I say that. As a uh, not exceeding time limits during the regulation three uh, speakers, uh, if you uh, exceed time that ex excess time will be reduced from your summing up time of three minutes. So make sure that uh, you manage time very well. As usual, we have a very good panel of judges, very well informed, um, committed, and uh, they will be very experienced themselves. And they would know that uh, this is a, a tough job for everybody. They understand their task very well. They performed very well. So the panel of judges uh, for this uh, contest too. And uh, we get to the, uh, the teams. Um, as we all know, uh, it is a uh, 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 common fact that uh, these two schools have done very well in the schools arena. Royal College Colombo will be represented by Omar Hazari, Jamal Sabri, Yusuf Hazari, and Adam Dilshan, with Mrs. Kanchana Gunaratna as TJ in charge. Good Shepherds Convent uh, Candy, uh, represented by uh, Surendran Himantri, Kavya Bandaranaika, Dineli Mendis and Anastasia Christie with Miss uh, Inosha Pereira as the teacher in charge. And uh, we also uh, start to reflect on the two subjects for the uh, two schools. Royal will uh, be 
talking about ancient Olympic history helps to develop a sense of continuity at uh, or rather of human civilization. While Good Shepherd's Convent will focus on modern Olympic history helps to develop a sense of continuity of human civilization. Good luck to the two teams and uh, to open the debate, Cordial inviting Omar Hazari of Royal. Are you ready? Uh, one minute, one minute, uh. Okay, uh, so am I audible and visible? Yes, everything is perfect. Your time is starting now. God's passion and the feats of athletic endeavor. That was the ancient Olympic Games, which was the sporting, social and cultural highlight of the ancient Greek civilization. With prior permission from the head table and members of the house, our team would like to analyze how ancient Olympics rather than modern Olympics has developed a sense of continuity of human civilization. We would like to prove, one, that modern Olympism is based on ancient Olympics and the core values has been borrowed for the first Olympics in, 70, uh, sorry, in 776 BC. And two, the impact of ancient Olympics has on the continuity of civilization is greater than that of the modern Olympics. The Oxford Dictionary defines human civilization as the culture of a society at a particular period of time. We would like to prove that, civili that civilization can be entombed within five Olympic values and that those values did exist from the very first Olympics Games, namely the joy of effort and fair play, which leads to peaceful civilizations, respect for oneself and others, develops balanced societies, pursuit of excellence and the balance between body, will and mind, which leads a healthy humanity. Today, our teammates and I will dissect these five Olympic values. And as the first speaker, I will elaborate on how the Olympism value of the balance between body, will and mind helps develop a sense of continuity of human civilization. My second and third speakers will talk about the other four values and how they have actually existed from ancient Olympics. Point one, the ancient Greek athletes training centered around kalakogathia, which means virtue and beauty. Unlike in modern Olympics, where athletes are propelled by professionalism and material benefits, in ancient Olympics, athletes prepared themselves physically, morally and spiritually. Two, did you know that the ancient Greek gymnasia was a public location used for not just training, but also for music and philosophy lectures? Achieving a harmonious balance between body, will and mind was an important aspect of personal development expected of every ancient athlete. Three, the Olympics gymnasia were located next to temples in order to teach the body, will and mind balance to athletes. Did you know that Plato himself was an eminent athlete? I would like to end my uh, I would like to end my speech saying man is an indivisible identity, an integrated unit of 
mind and body. Mensa. Yes, Thank yeah. you. Yes, please. Thank you. The first speaker from Good Shepherd's Convent, Surendran Imantri. Am I visible and audible? Yes, you can start. What happened after 1,500 years from the day the ancient Olympics was abolished? Honorable panel of judges and members of the house, Today, this house stands strongly on the topic, modern Olympic history helps to develop a sense of continuity of human civilization. Let's begin by defining the key terms in the topic. According to the Oxford Dictionary and Wikipedia, modern Olympics are a leading international sporting events in which thousands of athletes from around the world participate in a variety of sports competitions, which takes place once in four years in different countries. Develop is an action to grow and become more matured, advanced, and elaborated. Continuity is something that occurs on a steady, ongoing basis. Human civilization is a complex human society, usually made up of different cities with a certain characteristics of cultural and technological development. A new chapter of friendship, excellence, and respect was born in the name of modern Olympics, on the 6th of April, 1896, in Athens by Pierre de Coubertin. And now having completed 124 successful years, the Olympic Games and its values stands immortal and legendary. As for the words of Mahatma Gandhi, civilization is the encouragement of differences. The Olympic Games has broadened itself as winter, summer, youth, Paralympics, five continental and world games also endorsing Deaf Olympics and Special Olympics. Now, the Olympic Committee is there in almost 205 countries, and from 14 participating nations, it has grown to 206 participating nations. And this worldwide acceptance itself has proved us what a great source have the Olympic community been for the development of the civilization. It has eradicated Kaloba by having great people like Jesse Owens. It has portrayed the men's identity through wonderful structures like Lorona Johnston and have identified physical disability is the ability of proving oneself through legendary icons like Melissa Tapper and have recognized it is a willpower of a person that counts, not the amount of testosterone or estrogens in a body, but having created stories like Rachel Mackinnon. And also the committee believing in youngsters have drawn a friendly and a peaceful story called Obeb de Better, having young debaters like you and me. And the committee didn't stop with that. It has gone to the next level, doing a lot of charity work, like building schools and hospitals for underprivileged, providing job opportunities, helping victims of natural disasters, developing the tourist industries of the country, and more of anything, adding values to human lives by inculcating Olympism. Now, the second speaker will draw the diversified elements of a civilization and the impact of Olympism in it. And the third speaker will picture how modern Olympic Games urges towards the continuity and development of human civilization. I will summarize our team's question in the summing up. A baton that builds development can never fall. And now I pass that baton to the next speaker.
Second speaker for Royal Jamal Sabri. Am I audible? Am I visible? Yes, it is perfect. Uh, your time is starting now. Thank you. There is no future without the path made by its past. Everything has a start. The modern Olympic had a start, which was the ancient Olympics. With prior permission from the head table and members of the house. For my first point, I will elaborate on how the modern Olympics has been influenced by the ancient Olympics. The fact that we still have wrestling, boxing, pole vaulting, part shot, running, etc., is a very telling story on how the modern game has been influenced by the ancient game. Just as the just as the modern games, the ancient games also had rules and regulations. Their games were supervised by umpires, and they had an Olympic oath and swore to their gods' Zeus to compete honestly and not to cheat. Any offenders were punished. Another example is the Olympiad, which is a measurement of four years, which the Olympics still follow up to date. It is very clear now how the ancient Olympic history helped to develop a sense of continuity to human civilization. Moving on to my second point, explaining to you the advantages of ancient Olympics by enlightening two of the Olympic values, that is joy of effort and respect. The ancient Olympics was more a spiritual and religious event. Their prize was to get closer to their God and an olive leaf crown. And an olive leaf crown. They put in the joy of effort to succeed this opportunity. They, they followed the rules and regulations and they respected this religious culture to make their God Zeus happy. But the modern world is all about personal gain and monetary value. For example, Marion Jones. She won the Olympics in 2000, but she was accused for taking drugs. This clearly shows 
She did not put the joy of effort to succeed this. She did not respect the rules and regulations. Over here, she has clearly broken two Olympic values. What kind of example are these kind of people setting for a younger generation? Let me conclude my speech by quoting Emil Zetapik. An athlete can't run with money in his pocket. He must run with hope in his heart and dreams in his head. The ancient Olympic history has revealed to us the structure of the future. Over to you. Yes, please. You can go. Thank you, Gobi. Here's inviting Kavya Bandaranaika, who will be the second speaker for Good Shepherd's Convent. Yes, it is perfect. Uh, your time is starting now. Good afternoon to you, our honorable panel of judges and our audience. One of the fundamental principles of Olympism states that the goal of Olympism is to place sport at the services of the harmonious development of humankind with a view to promoting a peaceful society concerned with the preservation of human dignity. The gist of what is said in the mentioned principle goes hand in hand with this chart that I have right here that shows the holistic approach taken by the modern Olympic movement, which builds pathways to all aspects of education. The modern Olympic movement has succeeded in encompassing aspects of history and geography, language, fine arts, music and design, ecology and nature, sport and physical education, and science and mathematics. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, that we realize these are aspects of human civilization. Olympic education exposes us to a broad and deep Greek history, along with the sporting history and each significance of the ancient Olympic movement and thereafter each significance and history of the, of the modern Olympic movement. In a geographical aspect, the Olympic organization takes concern in understanding the relationship between the human and the environment and accordingly chooses the country to hold the Olympic Games every four years. And it is no secret that every four years we open our minds and learn something new about the country that the Olympic Games are held in. Isn't that right? For example, host cities often choose their mascots to be animals that have a special symbolism for the host country, like the mascot that was chosen for Seoul Korea Olympic Games in 1988 was a friendly tiger that features in many Korean legends. And how I first learned about the London Bridge and the River Thames through the London Olympics 2012 when I was just eight. And in an ecological point of view, the Olympic organization initiates acts of environment conservation for the sustainability of the environment, like how in Athens in 2004, improved the transport infrastructure in the city through the International Olympic Committee, which considerably and significantly reduced air pollution. In the light of fine arts and language, Olympism allows the creativity of people worldwide. And I believe the best example we can give you today is the fact that we have been given the opportunity and the exposure to take part in these debates that truly broaden our knowledge and, and has an impact on us long-term and the people around us too. 
It is important, ladies and gentlemen, that you realize these pathways of education were initiated at the early stages of the modern Olympics. These educational approaches of Olympism that are significant aspects of our human civilization help preserve and sustain our human civilization. And therefore, we firmly believe that modern Olympic history does contribute in the continuity of our human civilization. Over to you. This is Yusuf Fazari. He'll be the third and last speaker for Royal. Sir, am I audible and visible? Um, I don't see your video. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, right, can... yes. Yes, uh, yes, it is perfect. Yes. Your time is starting now. Thank you. The Olympic Games is not just about sports. It has influenced every facet of life, from religion to literature, with cry permission from the head table and members of the house. It is the ancient Olympic principles and values that still remain central to the modern, modern Olympic spirit. I will be first addressing how the second Olympic value of fair play has its roots in the ancient Greece and how it has continued to develop a sense of continuity of human civilization as well as onto modern Olympics. The ancient Greeks took, took fair play seriously, at least for flogged for cheating, and for cases of bribery, blackmail, or match fixing, statues were built with the name and city of the cheating at least, causing eternal shame. Another example can be seen in the Olympic truth, how the ancient Greeks banned hostilities during the period around the game. And this truce was revived in 1894, prom promoting equality and fair play for all. Even modern civilization's acceptance of these abilities has its roots in ancient Greece. And did not begin within the modern Olympic Paralympics. For instance, the Emperor Domitian allowed dwarf gladiators in the arena. He did not discriminate on size and disability. That's fair play. Greek Olympians all also cultivate the respect of competition and sportsmanship through the principles of Kalagasai, which my first speaker explained, by seeking to achieve harmony in everything. Moving on to my second point, pursuit of excellence, the fourth Olympic value. Did you know that the first Olympic champion was a cook named Karuba? Despite his poverty, he trained hard pursued excellence, and was determined to win. And he did. Now, centuries later, this pursuit of excellence has been handed through civilization, influencing modern Olympism. However, unlike modern Olympics, where the focus of athletes is on winning, the combination of skill, strength, and ethnical behavior, which was referred to as arate, meaning excellence, was what made the ancient Olympic athletes. I would like to conclude my speech by saying that it was the ancient Olympic Games ethos of fair play and excellence that is re-emphasized when the founder of the Olympic Committee said, the most important thing in the Olympic is not winning, but taking part. The essential thing in life is not conquering, but fighting well. Thank you. Thank you, Gobi. 
Dini Limendis is up next. Uh, she is the third and last speaker for Good Shepherds Convent. Am I audible and visible? Yes, it is perfect. Your time is starting now. Sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. This is said by none other than Nelson Mandela. Honorable judges and members of the house, the goal of Olympic is to contribute to build a peaceful and a better world by educating the youth to sport practices without any discrimination of any kind. If we take a look at the four Olympic movement aims, the first aim is to promote and develop the physical and moral qualities. Like in Paralympic, this event involves athletes with a range of disabilities that will exhibit each one's determination, bravery, and hard work. By watching what they can accomplish, the power of the game itself can change their attitude towards life. Also, if you peek into the ancient history of Olympic, slaves, barbarians, and women weren't allowed to compete or even watch. But modern Olympics has restricted. In the fifth fundamental principle of Olympism, it's written any form of discrimination with regard to a country or person on grounds of race, religion, politics, gender, or otherwise is incompatible. The second aim is to educate young people to sports in a spirit of better understanding between each other, such as youth Olympic games. They incorporate education and culture, inspiring young participants to live by Olympic values. This is a platform for the youngsters that has a chance to see their idols and give them something to aspire to. The third aim is to spread the Olympic principles throughout the world, thereby creating international goodwill. And the fourth aim is to bring together athletes of the world in the great four yearly sport festival. The purpose of Olympic movement is to promote, practice, and disseminate the Olympic values. In ancient Olympic games, what mattered the most was victory. Uh, an athlete would be labeled as a winner or a loser. But Baron D. Pierre D. Couperton has mentioned as the most important things in life is struggle, but not victory. Taking part, not only expecting to win, also to experience are the qualities of a sportsman, good sportsman and a leader, therefore, which will lead to a develop a continuity of human civilization. Not only by Olympic principles, modern Olympic has various plans to promote and protect the environment, to promote sustainable development as well. Like in the uh, fundamental Olympism, like in Sydney 2000, to enhance the urban environment, they cleaned up an old industrial area. These sustainable development of goals are to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all, also to encourage and support a responsible concerned environment. Therefore, regarding to what I've mentioned, it concludes how modern Olympic history has helped to develop a sense of continuity of human civilization. Thank you. Dinky, I hope the schools are aware. Cordial inviting Surendran Himantri for summing up on behalf of Good Shepherds Convent. Am I visible and audible? Yes, you can start. The Olympics are a wonderful metaphor 
of world cooperation, the kind of international competition that's wholesome and healthy, and an interplay between countries that represents the best in all of us by John Williams. Once again, and I take my pleasure in expressing the motion of the day, modern Olympic history of human civilization. Having witnessed the growth of the plant planted by Pierre de Coubertin and the words of Eduardo Pace, hosting Olympic Games of course guarantees the world's attention, but there's more to it than just simply botting the global spotlight. Most importantly, host cities can use the opportunity to create a positive and a lasting legacy, resulting in both tangible and intangible returns to the local community. Understanding this. Dingi, could you please uh, stop the timing for a while? Yes, I did, Mr. Gobi. The first speak has constructed the growth of modern Olympic Games. So you can start it again. Also, the speaker. Also, the speaker has elaborated how... I, th I think, uh, I think you stop it. Uh, uh, speaker, uh, I think we can't hear you properly. We can't hear Mr. Gobi. Yes, yes, yes. You stop the time. Speaker from uh, Good Shepherd Convent, we can't hear you. Could you please check your connection again? Have been a great source of speaker, development of human speaker, civilization. Speaker, excuse me. Uh, uh, there was an internet uh, error uh, while you were talking. Actually, we stopped the timing at the one minute of 20 seconds. Uh, one of the judges, could you please uh, let her know that where she stopped or we stopped the timing. Then she can continue from the point. I think it's better to start from uh, one minute, four seconds. Okay, could you please uh, let her the point where she stopped? Thank you. He's talking about the uh, world, uh, the understanding of that. <laughs> Am I clear and audible? Yeah, now it's clear. Can I start? Yeah, but can you start from the from just after the one minute and four seconds according to the judge's request? Okay, sure. Thank you, uh, uh, Dinky. Uh, now the time is uh, one minute and twenty seconds, so you can give her sixteen seconds additionally. Okay. That means her time will finish at three minutes and sixteen seconds. Thank okay. you. Uh, now you can start. The first peak has constructed the growth of modern Olympic Games from 1896 to 2020. Also, the speaker has elaborated how Olympic community have been a great source of development for the human civilization. A team having identified essentially all civilizations that rose to the level of possessing an urban culture had needed for the two forms of science related technology. As Frederick Said said, the second speaker has pictured the diversified aspects of civilizations like fine arts and music and design, ecology and nature, geography and history, and so many more. Hurdling with that, the third speaker has deployed what a big part does the modern Olympic Games plays in the continuity and development of civilization. Continuity gives us roots. Change gives us branches, letting us stretch and grow and reach new heights. And we being the roots and branches, go to the next speaker.
We invite Omar Hazari. Sir, am I visible and audible? Yes. Yes, it is perfect. Yes. Your time is starting. Oh, sorry. Are you okay? Yes. Are you sir. okay with your first question? Uh, yes, yes, sir. All right. Now your time is starting. Your time is starting now. Thank you. As the sum up speaker for today, I would like to rest the topic that ancient Olympic history helps to develop a sense of continuity of human civilization. Our team has successfully deconstructed this moment, this motion into five logical arguments by interconnecting the five Olympic values to the topic throughout each speaker's speech. Our first speaker showed you how the Olympic values and principles have been followed throughout the centuries from the beginning of Olympics in 776 BC and not from modern Olympics. Furthermore, he mentioned on how, the, on how the Olympic value of balance between body, will, and mind, which was an integral part of ancient Olympics, with the Kologathia principle, has found its way in modern Olympics, as well as influenced civilizations over centuries. A second figure then proved how the Olympic values of joy, of effort, and respect for others was an integral part of ancient Olympic, as opposed to the racial discrimination that has seeped into the modern Olympics just a few decades ago. Our third speaker proved pursuit of excellence in ancient Olympics has been brought forward to current civilization, as well as to modern Olympics. He showed us today how cheating and match fixing were treated as grave crimes in ancient Olympics, a culture that has trickled down to modern Olympics and over civilizations. The final Olympic value a third speaker spoke about was of, ex of excellence and how this was integrally tied up to the principle of Kologathia. In ancient Olympics, it's not hard to believe that it's the example set by the first ever Olympic champion, Coriobus, who was a poor cook and beat all odds to excel. And at that stage of for, and at that stage for modern athletes, such as Wilma Rudolph, who beat polio to win gold against all odds. And indeed, for people from all walks of life throughout civilizations. I would like to rest my case saying that we have proved beyond doubt that ancient Olympics history has developed a sense of continuity of human civilization and thus has helped everyone throughout their, civil throughout their civilizations until today during the modern Olympics. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, human civilization and how the uh, history of Olympics, uh, ancient and modern, could influence all that. Some areas that you have to understand very carefully to talk. The continuity of uh, human civilization is under threat these days because of the um, health uh, concerns and the pandemic, as it were. So, time and again, these things come up and uh, the young participants uh, have a chance to grasp all that and uh, bring out uh, the salient factors. So, uh, good to know. Mr. Maxwell De Silva, are you there?